And uh, even though I left a career on um, administration or uh, business administration, I uh, didn't finish that career, and I always wanted to be in radio. But back in the city, in Mexico City, there was not so many opportunities. It wasn't like here that you can enter and you can get an interview for a job. And uh, you need over there to be either connected and to have a lot of influences, friends with influences, so you can get a job, basically, in media. So unfair? Yes, it is very unfair. But that's the way it is. I don't know if that changed already over the years. Uh, and I guess that changed also with the internet and with many other channels. TV channels and video channels going to researchers going to uh, to the market, but when I came here, I uh, went to um, uh, a small radio stations on a little village. Uh, everybody knows a little village in Chicago, which is like the Mexican town. I don't know if everybody's from the suburbs of Chicago, but um, somebody I was taking classes on on Truman College, and somebody says, if you like radio, you should go to this little station I know in little village. Ask them if they, if they can help you and they can. Uh, train you in order to become a newscaster. That's what I wanted to be, a newscaster. And then immigration reform. I've been on the trenches, and I don't know if you remember, all of you look very young, but in 2006, probably you heard about the immigration marches that we organized in Chicago. And then on 2007, and then those marches that we organized in Chicago trickled down in many other marches and around the nation. And it became um, like an immigration modern movement that nowadays we're still fighting, but we have achieved uh, several victories because of what we started in Chicago. Not that we started the whole thing, but uh, grassroots communities, activists, and there was no Facebook or Twitter or nothing like that. All of that started about 2009, 2010, something like that. Maybe you remember that? I didn't have an account until 2010 or something myself. So all of these movement, all of these people who went marching um, on 2006 and 2007, they used this in the media. They didn't have. TV didn't support us. You know, everybody was listening to what we were saying in Spanish. Some radio stations in English they give us a little bit of support because every, uh, not all Latinos march. There were a lot of. Uh, African Americans, Muslim, Asians, you know, they, everybody. The, the immigrants are from all over the world. It's not only Latinos, so we all got together. But radio was fundamental. And that's one of my major uh, prizes that I had that, um, that I accomplished uh, as working as a media radio host and, uh, and advocate for something that I believe that is in the reform. So, why am I telling you this? Because through the years, uh, I did what I, I did my news because every day it was happening in Chicago, it was happening in the suburbs, the major issues, health, education, uh, violence in the streets, everything. But immigration has always been in the bottom of my heart, and, and, and I always talk about it, you know, and it's very important. So, but I really like politics. I really enjoy being in the media, so I'm gonna con gonna be continuing those two things because it makes me happy. In between, uh, from the beginning when I told you that I went and knocked at the door and, and that little bit of the station and, and now working for La Ley, I work as a senior advisor for Governor of Illinois, Pat Quinn, maybe you remember him. We lost the election last year. And uh, and how did I get there? Well, as a big advocate of the community, I always try to have in my show, a lot of personalities and celebrities and politicians and everybody who spoke Spanish or who spoke English, I was able to translate it simultaneously. It's another big advantage that you might want to develop as a future. If you are able to speak Spanish and English simultaneously and, and do interviews, please do, because you're going to have a lot of great opportunities. So I invited a lot of uh, senators, uh, uh, candidates, I mean, I had Barack Obama, I had, you know, when he was a senator in Illinois, he was, he was thinking about running for president, so I had the problem saying, I had Obama before he was a president. Now he doesn't even want to talk to me, but, <laughs> but, uh, but that was, one of, was uh, an amazing experience. Who knew he was going to be kind of president, right? Uh, but um, I always enjoy working with them. And one of them was Pat Quinn. He was a treasurer. Back in the year, and then he became a lieutenant governor, 
who knew that he was going to become the governor after Rod Blagojevich, right? Mm -hmm. After we all know what happened to him. And uh, yeah, he's still, he's still uh, in jail, right? And, um, uh, and then um, we'll become friends, Pat Quinn and myself. We really like each other because he, he came to promote programs uh, to help Latinos and all communities. And every time I ask him to be in the show at 5.30 or 6.30 in the morning just to be pre preparing the show and all of that, he was there. You know, he was one of the few politicians who would be there early if he said he was going to be there.